Puja Atman, Sri Swami, Jyotir Mayananji, commences tonight's satsang with a Sanskrit peace chant. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachyate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purname Vavashishyate Om Shanti 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 We begin with mystic song by Sri Swami Lalitananda played and sung by Sri Swami Umananda and Rajneesh. Our song tonight is based on a poem by Swamiji. It's called O Krishna. We are recording from the ashram of our revered Guru, Pujayatma Shri Swami Jyotir Mayananji in Miami, Florida. Today is July the 10th, 2018, Tuesday evening, and tonight Swamiji will be lecturing on Yoga Vasishta. This is series 2018, class number 54. And now Pujayatma Shri Swami Jyotir Mayananji. Om Brahmanandam Paramasukhadam Kevalam Jnana Murtim Dvandvati tam gagana sadrisham tatvam asyadi lakshyam ekam nityam vimalam achalam sarvadhi sakshi bhutam bhavati tam triguna rahitam sadgurum tam namami om. Adorations to Sadguru who is Brahman, the giver of supreme bliss, embodiment of pure consciousness, one without a second vast as the ether, infinite, eternal, beyond the three gunas and their modifications, the supreme preceptor. Yoga Vashishtha Utpatti Prakarana, the story of Leela continues. And already we have given you the setting of the Leela story, which is like a folder within folder. So I'm not going to repeat too many of that. But coming to the last stage where 
लीला नंबर वन इज विथ गॉड एस सरस्वती एंड किंग विदूर था इंजर्ड हैज बीन ब्रॉट इन टू द रॉयल पैलेस एंड इज स्ट्रगलिंग टू डिपार्ट फ्रॉम द बॉडी दैट्स द स्टेज वेयर एंड वॉट हैपन्स टू लीला टू लीला नंबर टू इज already she has left her body she died and her soul was led by her daughter all these all details of this story and leela number 2 finds herself in king king padma's place the dead body of king padma is under the flowers Lila number two joins there. <coughs> People look into this, and they don't find anything contradictory. Lila number two becomes completely harmonized with the whole setting. So while that's the situation there, Goddess Saraswati is giving insight into the law of karma. and birth and death mystery about all this she was just ha continued o rama when leela number 2 died in the world of king viduratha her spirit identified itself with her mental body and flew into the sky again that's allegorical <laughs> when have something happens into through your mind you don't fly anywhere <laughs> but but you do experience going to dream in your dream you fly so well, so many times but really you're not flying is the magic of the mind but that's the way it is experienced by soul led by their karma and remember that lila number 2 had received the boon from saraswati that she would travel to the next realm with her own body and saraswati had granted that but it didn't happen literally because boon follows your experience what you consider literal is not literal it's a world of maya so when lila too died in the world of king viduratha her spirit identified itself with her mental body and flew into the sky with the intention of going to the world of king padma to meet her husband on the way she was welcomed and guided by the spirit of her young daughter by by king viduratha subtle point is being given to you a soul coming into the world comes in an environment of near and dear ones and many times one of the dear ones can play a tremendous part in your personality but this is not outer help it looks like outer help it's your own karmic process just like in dream you meet lots of people and even in even dream you find near and dear ones close to you <laughs> they are not different people they are led by your own karma what type of dream you want to have you have to always understand you are not deter being determined by people around you you are determining the people around led by your karma (laughs) 
Apparently, the young daughter of Leela II had also departed from her physical body, but her spirit, pursuing the course of its karma, did not materialize in the world of King Padma. After, ging, after guiding her mother, Leela II, through the astral planes, the daughter's spirit vanished. After Leela No. 2 entered into the world of King Padma, she found herself seated by the dead body of the king. She felt that she had journeyed through the astral worlds in her own physical body from the world of King Viduratha. In her awareness, she didn't change the body. <laughs> when you go to dream, in your awareness, you have not changed your body. <laughs> but it is not real. <laughs> the body in your dream is not you. Your body is totally different. But you don't feel that. Thinking within herself, how fortunate I am to have joined my husband who lies here wounded and who will come back to life by the blessings of Goddess Saraswati. Goddess Saraswati has already told, forecast, that King Padma is going to emerge out of dead state. He will, serve, he will come to life. And so Leela number two began to fan the face of the king. Goddess Saraswati said to Leela, Leela number one, O oh Leela, you yourself have appeared in the form of Leela two because of your intense desire to be with your husband. Leela number two is nothing but a shadow proceeding from your own personality. This, this you need to, be di to digest. <laughs> Near and dear ones are your own shadows. <laughs> Try to figure that out. <laughs> the whole world is actually your own shadow. Led by your vasana, how you experience the world. You are Atma, the Self. Sun is the reality, the real you, Sun. But coming to the world, Earth planet, there are countless reflected suns. Mm -hmm. And they are all in different situations. <laughs> Some reflections have inspiring relationship. Some reflections have no such inspiring, perspiring relationship. <laughs> but they are all your shadows, you as the sun. That's from the advanced. That's what actually this whole story is leading you to understand. Leela asked, Leela number one, O oh Goddess, why this second Leela, welcomed by the servants and attendants of the king, are they not surprised to see a strange personality? Goddess Saraswati replied, O oh Leela, behold the miracle of Maya. Leela number two is not viewed as a stranger. Rather, they accept her as their queen. They didn't find any change. Miracles happen in the lives of family. All the neighborhood doesn't know anything about it. <laughs> they see the same face coming up every day from the house. <laughs> Nothing abnormal. 
This is a crude way to explain to you, but that's the subtle point behind it. All relationships are sustained by the projections of the mind. Led by divine will and sustained by the reality of the self, human beings find themselves involved in different patterns of relationships. And they resign to the apparent realities of existence, led by ignorance. You resign to the real, apparent reality, I am this body. And in that level, you develop these people are friendly, those people are outsiders. But those people, they're enemies. <laughs> <laughs> so all that goes on developing within your mind. But all these items of dear, not dear, unfriendly, they are expressions of karmic basis of your mind, karma. <laughs> no one is giving you anything that is not led by your karma. So one becomes a dear relative, your good karma has brought dearness to you through that personality. Another negative karma has brought undearness to you. <laughs> no one can impact upon you unless it is your karma. But that doesn't mean that you are just gripped by karma, but you have, everyone has a spark of free will. If you utilize your free will, do purushartha, then you go on changing your karmas and that can lead you to prosperous situation and finally even without led by your purushartha, blended with divine grace, you can attain enlightenment, go beyond all karmas, and realize I am the only one in this universe, Brahman. Leela number one asked, O oh Goddess, Leela number two had received the boon that she would go to the world of Padma with her own body. Why is it that even though she was granted the boon, yet she had to receive her physical body behind? Goddess Saraswati explained, it is impossible for the body of a dream to enter into the body of the waking state. But those who are ignorant about the nature of the self are identified with their physical bodies. They cannot physically move from one plane to another. Simple point is that when you are praying and asking for things, you are in the plane of Maya. And if you have the experience that God has granted you, a Devi comes or a divine Ishta Devata comes and says, what's your, why well, ask and it will be granted to you. But what is being granted to you is according to your need. And your need is your mind is not enlightened. So what you are looking for is in the realm of Maya. 
A growing baby, what does he look for? Give me a toy. Mm -hmm. Give me a kitty cat. And the mother doesn't give me a real kitty cat, give the toy cat. <laughs> I make the cat jump around. <laughs> and the baby, mother has granted my boon. <laughs> so try to understand that. The boon and what is being granted depends upon your state of mind. Those who meditate upon the reality, I am not this body. They rise beyond the physical body. They gain the power of sankalpa, true will. Thereby they can move to any plane of existence without a change of bodies. Since they possess none, you can be anywhere and there's no need for you to think, am I come, take, come with my body or not? <laughs> because you are really not body. For a moment, intermission. Section fifty four. Insight is being given in relation to death, karmas. Leela said, O Goddess, King Viduratha is about to die. What leads to one's death? What determines the lifespan of an individual? Please enlighten me on these points. Goddess Saraswati said, the karmas of a person Determine his life span. <clears throat> Let me give you more detail. When you talk of karma, your attention is being directed to three aspects of karma. Sanchit karma, accumulated storehouse. Accumulated storehouse you cannot imagine. Just like in modern times, look at your desktop. How many things are there it's accumulated? <laughs> the accumulated is vast. But you don't work with all the accumulated. We just you have few folders near you that, that you deal with. So accumulated a storehouse is vast. And technically, the entire vast accumulated can be sublimated fast. If you attain enlightenment, all that sanchit karma moves away. But if you are not enlightened, a portion of san sanchit karma becomes the basis of your present personality. This is called kriyaman karma or agami karma, these are two synonyms, synonymous words. Kriyaman, karma that is current karma. Agami, karma that shapes your future. Now kriyama, while you are involved with kriyaman karma, now firstly kriyaman karma will determine three things to which family you are going to be born. Jati. <laughs> you have been loving too much gold, then you will be born the goldsmith family. <laughs> <laughs> loving music, music, then you will form the musical family. And so forth. So that Jati. Next, are you, how long you are going to live your karma determines that much you need, led by your karmic basis. 
and how many years you must live through to according to match up with your karma. Living long or living short, in philosophical world, it doesn't mean much. It's not a good news. If someone has been given the boon, you will live for 125 years. <laughs> oh, wow, great. <laughs> Try to understand when you live, you live with your mind <laughs> and the problems of your mind. If your mind continues to carry miserable experience, living long with a big injury in your neck or in your head, that's not a real life. So, whatever it is, don't be deluded by the period of life. But whatever period of life you enjoy comes led by your karma, prarabdha karma. And again you have to understand that prarabdha karma permits purushartha, self-effort. So even though karmically you are born to live, say for example, only 50 years, but having come into the body and having developed your own understanding how you want to utilize your willpower, you start taking a lot of John Prash. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> you can do something to prolong your life. <laughs> Prarabdha is flexible. Some aspect of Pradha is not. You were born in a family. Now suddenly realize you shouldn't have been there. <laughs> That's, that will not happen. <laughs> so Jati, Ayu and Bhoga. Bhoga was experiences of pleasure and pain. But all this changes led by your purushartha, self-effort. If your self-effort is for becoming a yogi, then you convert your painful experience into a stage of austerity. The painful experience, instead of creating negative impressions in your mind, allows you to develop contrary, positive movement. So, but this is kind of a mathematical picture. Your pleasure and pain all depend upon your karmas. That's called bhoga. Bhoga is called enjoyment. <laughs> and even if you are suffer something, it is karma bhoga. You are enjoying your karma. <laughs> and as you go on enjoying your karma, pleasure and pain, you are creating new karmas. New karmas are called agami karma. New karma has two aspects. Changing your present condition giving a different value as well as promoting a future for you. That's called Agami movement. Some good karma or some sadhana movement that you have done very positively may immediately give its result in some people. In some people, they will not. You did lots of good karma, lots of sadhana, and still you remain buried under lots of sorrowful situations. 
Why? Because the karmic process. Some obstacle has not been removed. And sometimes some karma will not bear its fruit in this life, but waits for future. All depends upon the different qualities of karma and your state, your degree of purushartha. And your purushartha goes into another great change. If you be bring in devotion in your heart, then grace begins to operate. When grace begins to operate, then there's so anything that happens is indescribable, beyond your imagination. <laughs> and again, all these experiences you have made yourself Utilize your f f willpower, created new, new karmas, brought big, great changes. But still you are conditioned by karma. You are coming into this world of birth and death. This point has to be understood. Your goal is to become absolutely free of karmas. And, and this point will be brought to you soon. Karmas of an individual are related to time, space, activity, and material resources. They are either good or evil. They determine one's experiences after death. The nature of next embodiment, one's life span, and all experiences of pleasure and pain, they are result of karma. Leela asks, O oh Goddess, is death painful or pleasant? What happens after death? Must all people have similar experiences after death? Or do different people have different experiences? Goddess Saraswati explained, there are three types of dying persons, the dull-witted, the yogi, and the enlightened. Dull-witted means the vast majority of people. The yogi only one in thousand, some that type. Sadhaks are not many. Yogis are aspiring, aspirants, striving to progress on the path of spirituality. And then those who have attained enlightenment, the Jivan Muktas. In the case of Jivan Mukta, all sanchit karma is deleted. All agami karma is cut out. Cut out. Karma is formed only on the basis of your identity with the body. Body refers to three bodies, physical, subtle, causal. And when the enlightenment has become mature, you are not identified with mind, intellect, ego, body. That profound understanding is at the root of your whole awareness. So therefore, the question of Death, for the enlightened one, to enlighten one, death has already occurred and he has faced it. 
physical death is a matter of course. There again, the appearance of death will depend upon the prarabdha karma. Enlightened one, as I said, all sanchit karmas out, all agamis karmas obliterated. Prarabdha karma continues, but it is not a reality for the sage, but a reality for the world where his body was existing. And for that world, his personality will have all its expressions as long as there is prarabdha karma behind it. So led by prarabdha, a saintly personality goes through different circumstances. That in divine hand, what is needed for the world? For Jesus to be crucified. For Socrates to drink poison. For Lord Krishna to be shot at the soles of his feet. <laughs> and for Buddha to eat some problematic <laughs> fruit. <laughs> That's what I'm giving you jokingly. <laughs> But that is the only thing. All saints and sages go through many challenges. All the challenges, Rama had to go to the forest. Sita was kidnapped and all that. All the challenge Rama had to face. Krishna had to face many challenges. But not just Rama, Krishna, all saints and sages. Tulsidas. Ramakrishna Paramahamsa, Raman Maharshi, there is no any sage who didn't face challenges. Dehzhare ka danda hai, sab kahu ko hoye. All things that happen, you think all this trouble coming only is in me, but that's not so. <laughs> sab kahu ko hoye. All have, all implies whether you are enlightened or not enlightened, your hairs are going to turn grey. <laughs> your teeth are going to shake. <laughs> your ears are going to become deaf. <laughs> your nerves one day will go <laughs> collapse. Sab kahu ko hoye. Jnani bhukte, jnan se. But if you are enlightened, this is not you. The sun watches as it were over. A reflected sun, how it is crying when the jar in which the reflected sun is there is broke. <laughs> but if the reflected sun knows I am the sun, then all this breaking, etc., is a kind of amusement. It doesn't exist. Even in your dream, you may be experiencing a terrible dream. But simple one little sneak of wisdom is a dream. And immediately the experience has become fun. Though in dream it has the same, same, same way as it is in waking state. Good, evil, pleasant, unpleasant and so forth. One who has not purified his intellect by good association and has remained sunk in the muddy waters of ignorance experiences intense pain during death. Again, just like even maintaining good health requires a lot of your insight. And a simple formula, prevention is better than cure. Prevention is the best method. In other words, even in your healthy condition, you must live your life in such a way that you avoid disease, etc. As you grow, you live your life in such a way 
that you don't dump yourself into void when you get old. Allow your mind to build up a big palace, a mental palace. And where you can, what I'm implying jokingly, develop in your mind a deeper understanding of yourself. Mm -hmm. And if you don't develop in one or two days, even while young, start working upon it. But if you have not, don't be frustrated. <laughs> Reality is not upset about it. <laughs> Whenever you turn your <laughs> gaze towards the reality, truth, immediately a profound blessing enters your heart. So if those people who have not cultured their mind, trained their mind how to face adversity, prosperity. Even in life, they, they experience death many a time. <laughs> Real death will not give as much trouble as you have experienced led by your mental fright relating to death, called Abhinivesh Klesha. Everyone suffers from, there is instinctive fear of death. And it needs to be corrected day by day through your sadhana. Otherwise, each, each year when you blow your candle, <laughs> on your birthday, <laughs> it brings the smoke in your eyes. <laughs> so, those who have not utilized their intellect, they go through terrible pain. The real death is actually very peaceful movement. All the imagination of your mind about death cannot really match up with the actual death process. It's extremely smooth. You open a window and the breeze has passed. <laughs> That's what happens. We always see that how people are struggling and moment a person dies, the whole body becomes completely relaxed. And at that time, there is a very smooth movement. But prior to death, as long as the mind is working, there will be always memories of the past. What will happen after? So many things, because the mind has unwittingly created a way of acting that it just brings, works with sorrows and anxieties. Same mind can be trained to have a different perspective. Mind can turn to Godward mind. Just at this stage, I will give you three mantras. Sahaj, Saras, and Sayujya. <laughs> Always view dying process, pray to God, may I face that stage Sahaj, just like a breeze passing, not with discordance and noise and turbulence, Sahaj. And while death has not come, <laughs> let me live this life saras. 
Sarasim means life has a joyous taste about it. Life is joyous. You live your life and enjoying your life. Life that is purposeful. You are practicing integral yoga in your life, doing your duties and flourishing. That's called saras. Mm -hmm. And final state, may I become united with you. In, he, while saying that, in the end I am saying, may I be united. But being united is a constant goal of your life. But as long as you are viewing your life in the terms of death and after, let your mind have that type of prayer. Sahaja deaths, when we live in such a way that passing away should be as normal as a person going to sleep. Sahaj. And not with trouble and turmoil. In a good, peaceful environment. And while living, life should be saras. Enjoy all the opportunities the beautiful drama of the world before you, God has given you. <laughs> has given you five senses <laughs> to poke into the nature of the world. <laughs> so live with joy. Be good and do good. To be good, allow fragrance to enter your heart. Do good, waft the fragrance. That's called saras. And how will it all end up? I am that. Shivoham. Aham Brahmasmi. So if you are working that way, there will be no pain. No pain. Whatever will be there, you will be able to transcend. Turning to those who are not in that stage of, but are gripped by dullness of mind, Saraswati Devi describes, his throat begins to choke. Strange noises proceed from his throat. His eyeballs turn upwards. And where the complexion of his face changes, he sees nothing but darkness before his eyes. He is unable to express himself. His senses become dull and his mind is overpowered by delusion. He enters into a state which is inert like a stone. At the moment of death he feels as if he is drowning in the ocean, as if he is borne on through the sky, as if thrown into a dark well as if driven through a dense stone, as if the very world ha had been turned topsy, topsy-turvy. Experiencing numerous afflictions, he passes on into a deep swoon of death. And then he comes back, continuing the painful experiences of karmas by another embodiment, embodiment after embodiment. This is the picture about those who, who are at the mass level, not striving for anything good. No good samskaras, no, nothing good. And again, there is another picture of death, what happens when nadis, there are countless channels radiating from the heart. Heart, I am here speaking not as an ahat chakra, but mystic heart, which is the center of your all personality. But again, considering from 
Kundalini point of view, <laughs> there are many nadis radiating from your heart center. Those who are enlightened, the pranas begin to flow through the susumna in a harmonized way. Those who are not enlightened, the pranas depart through a, a channel, not susumna. And those channels, they are lead, leading the soul to different levels of experience. Death is caused by the sankalpa of the soul. Sankalpa of the soul. What happens? At the time of death, what the soul wants, that comes forward. Not what your mind says. Mind is not completely you. You are beyond your mind. Your mind goes topsy-turvy. The soul has its own judgment about what should it be. So the last thought enters your unconscious <coughs> and expresses through your mind. And divine will guides the soul. Led by the illusion of the world process, <coughs> the soul rises to higher levels or descends to lower levels. The essence of the soul is pure consciousness. This consciousness cannot die. The true identity of a person is not his body, not his pranas, not his senses, <coughs> not his mind or intellect. Therefore, how can this consciousness be said to die? That we have to understand the death is not a real death, it's a change of the body and mind, change of cloth, until you don't need any cloth, that's liberation. You don't need body, mind, etc. How can a person witness his own death? Who has ever witnessed the death of consciousness? That's all these are very philosophical questions. A person says, <coughs> everything I experience, I doubt it. 
I just enjoy doubting everything. <laughs> the answer is given to the person. But can you doubt the doubter? <laughs> you are still believing in something. <laughs> I'm going to die. <laughs> person says, I'm practically dead, <laughs> but who is watching the death? <laughs> if you are not there to watch it, then why worry? <laughs> it is Death is not an eyewitness experience because <laughs> it doesn't exist. In fact, the experiences of birth and death are projections of the mind. Chittavrittis, thought waves of the mind, caused by one's vasanas, subtle desires. There is neither death nor birth for you. You are that immortal self. When an aspirant studies the scriptures under the guidance of a guru, and when he practices listening, reflection, and meditation, Shavana, Manan, Nididhyasana. These are three stages. Listening to the teachings that removes doubts. Sanshaya Bhavana. Then reflection. Reflection, which are. You try to assimilate, digest what you have listened to. That removes Asam Bhavana, the sense that it's impossible for me to attain. The sense of impossibility moves away, it becomes a practical reality that you are living for attaining enlightenment. And lastly, it's called Nididhyasan. The mind is comes to realize there is nothing real. You are looking at the ocean, focus your focusing your mind on a wave. Now the focus changes. And you realize all these waves are nothing but the ocean. So, as long as wave was the, your reality, there were countless waves. When the ocean became the reality, all waves subsided. <laughs> so, this is Dhyasan does that to the mind, that understanding. Brahman alone is real. The world is a Maya. Brahma Satyam Jagan Mithya. When that becomes perfectly secure, then he becomes an established yogi. He is enlightened. Jivan Mukta. He is ever free from birth and death. So with this old can Questions. Anyone have any questions? <coughs> um, that's that, mm -hmm. um, if you see a pattern or a circumstance that's reoccurring in your life, maybe because of your karma, and you want to root out, you don't want to be in that same situation over and over. How do you root out whatever it is that's in you or in your karma that's causing this thing to reoccur? Mm -hmm. That's what exactly you are doing. You came to satsanga. You are asking the question. 
<laughs> listening to these talks. That's the answer about it. <laughs> All the talk you heard about souls, that needs to be assimilated. It's being sadhana in your daily life. Live to remedy the cause of all pain. Thank you. Okay. That said, Swamiji, um, is it different between uh, natural death and suicide, and death by death by suicide? Suicide is like like we are doing many negative karmas. A person. <laughs> commits murder. <coughs> he is also committing murder to himself. So it comes under sinful karma. This is not a normal death. He is creating karma. When we say about karma, yes, everything happens due to karma. But that doesn't justify the happening. One who has done the karma, he is responsible. He's, he promoted negative karma, his karma could have changed if he was listening to others, came into a different type of style of life. In other words, no matter whatever may be the helpless situation within you, there is a method to bring out your self-effort to improve it. And that's the, always the remedy. Anyone by frustration does something negative, it is not justifiable. It is just a simple causation. Because he was suffering from this, he committed suicide. But that's not the answer. Most of you know these um, beautiful calendars that have been coming out for some years now, and they're very precious to everyone in their homes. They get to see Swamiji's picture all the time, and each month flips another image and just keep Swamiji in our hearts, on our walls, on our refrigerators, everywhere we turn. <laughs> so um, the calendar for 2019 is um, in preparation now. And uh, you can look forward to that coming out. And if anyone would like to contribute to the production of this calendar, would you please speak with Yashoda? Um, any contribution would be helpful. Um, this is contribution towards the production and the costs of producing this calendar. That would be a, a helpful and lovely gift to the ashram and Swamiji's mission and to all of our beloved walls and refrigerators and wherever we place these wonderful calendars. So see Yashoda if you would like to make any contribution towards the calendar production. Tomorrow is Wednesday, so we will continue with Yoga Vashishta. On Friday, Swamiji lectures you know on uh, the Tulsi Ramayana. Saturday, 7 p.m., Pranayam, and then Swamiji joins us at 7.30 for the guided meditation. Sunday is still a regular Sunday program. That means a delightful Gita lecture and a delightful meal. And two Sundays in two weeks, uh, on the 22nd of, 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 22nd of July at 5 p.m., we will be celebrating Guru Purnima. So remember, we're getting very close now. Plan that we can be together for that wonderful ce celebration. 
And now please come come for Kum Kum. Thank you. 